Do you think that AI will help governments to address the challenges of the 21st century? Yeah, um, I think the key, uh, and I quote from what Yuval said to me uh, three years ago, the key is to create stories that can serve us without being enslaved uh, by those stories. Uh, I think a key part of democracy is to make sure that the kind of stories uh, that offers the antidotes, like when people listen to those stories, they understand that it's not the only way for, for example, the social media to lead to polarization. There are many people who participate in projects, for example, the Community Note volunteers on Twitter, who also work with a sort of AI, although the algorithm is open, uh, to compete, not to polarize, but rather to depolarize, to find the kind of story that when someone uh, gets outraged by a certain tweet, immediately by reading that community note, the outrage is taken away and make way for uh, instead uh, recontextualization to understand a fuller picture of what is going on. And a key insight in the community note algorithm was that we need to find the bridge makers, the people who make the stories and the stories make sense to people on both sides of polarization. And once we can give the platform the visibility to those bridge making stories, then people after reading those stories, uh, re-engage as democratic citizens in a more constructive mode. So I would argue that there are also certain kind of assistive intelligence that are pro-social in social media mm -hmm. in uh, fostering uh, the human flourishing by associating together to form meaningful organization links only if we can systematically give more visibility to the bridge making stories rather than the polarizing stories. It's good to hear about cases where AI can help appease public debate. Audrey, could you tell us more about how the Taiwanese government has been using a platform like Polis to make itself more accessible to citizens? Yeah, uh, so it was kind of a precursor to the community notes that I just mentioned. Uh, in fact, Polis influenced directly the design of the Twitter community notes. In 2015, we were also facing a onslaught of a kind of AI called UberX, right? It's a kind of AI that reliably dispatches somebody close to you to pick you up and charge you for it. And they say that it's not a taxi service, it's just an AI that helps the riders uh, and the um, drivers uh, to find each other. Uh, but the entire society, of course, was quite polarized in 2015. There are people who think, oh, this is the uh, beginning of this sharing economy uh, platform era. But there are also people who say that, no, this is a way for algorithm to exploit people so that they become interchangeable parts in the gig economy and so on. Uh, so we deployed the police uh, tool to bring together the people who are on both sides of polarization to share their experiences and find out the shared common values hidden in plain sight. For example, people all agree, actually, that it's okay to have surge pricing, but not undercutting existing meters, because that would be unfair to the labor condition, that they should also serve the rural areas and empower the co-ops locally, not just serve the urban area where it's profitable, that insurance is important, and so on. So once people actually so everybody agree with each other on most of the ideas most of the time. They do not get distracted endlessly on those one or two polarized topics, but can actually very quickly uh, form the rough consensus, which end up becoming, you know, Uber becoming the Q taxi fleet, but also the local co-ops and social entrepreneurs can also enjoy search pricing and at best dispatch. So it turns a zero sum or negative sum game into a positive sum one by engaging a higher bit rate of co-creation. So it is deliberative democracy, but also at scale. Hello, I'm Professor Yuval Noah Harari, uh, CEO on Taiwan Plus. Hello, I'm Audrey Tang, Taiwan's Digital Minister, CEO on Taiwan Plus. 